Jim Gibbegi, instructor and coordinator of experiential education at the College of DuPage. In March of 2015, I brought a group of students to New Zealand where we thoroughly explored the culture and spectacular natural beauty of the North and South Islands. The experience culminated in Fiordland National Park, where we embarked on what is regarded as the finest walk in the world, the 34-mile Milford Track. We began at Teanau Downs with a one-hour water taxi ride up Lake Teanau. Arriving at the wharf, a short hike to the lodge would complete our first day on the Milford Track. Day two would involve a gradual 16-kilometer climb along the Clinton River through a beach forest. Our most difficult day would come on day three when we climbed over McKinnon Pass and then to Sutherland Falls, the fifth highest waterfall in the world. We would hike 18 kilometers today. Our 21 kilometer day would be the longest and our last as we gradually descended toward Milford Sound. As we left Hay Now Downs, we boarded the water taxi with backpacks carrying just the essentials to get us through the five days we would spend in Fiordland National Park. The Maori are the indigenous Polynesian people of New Zealand, and Lake Teanau, along with countless other landmarks, have Maori names. After an hour on the water, we arrived at Glade Wharf, the trailhead for the Milford Track. The hike to our first lodge was only 1.6 kilometers, so we spent the late afternoon exploring. This part of the world is so pristine that you can safely drink water right from the source. The huts and lodges along the notoriously wet trail not only provide shelter, but services that allowed us to enjoy the journey without the burden of camping equipment, food, and fuel. Altogether, we would stay at four different lodges, all a day's walk from one another. Crossing the Clinton River on a suspension rope bridge is how we began our second day. The sound of this rushing river would accompany us for most of the 16-kilometer hike. Pure beach forest covers more than 29,000 square kilometers of New Zealand, and for most of today we were passing through one. The smell of the damp forest complemented the sound of the river quite nicely. What surprised me most on our hike over the Milford Track was the wide variety of bird life we saw and the distinct calls that moved throughout the forest as we hiked. We saw bellbirds, whose bell-like song can be heard here. The fantail was common as they followed us down the trail picking up insects that our hiking boots stirred up. The flightless weka is often mistaken for the famous New Zealand kiwi. And of course the kia, the world's only alpine parrot that can only be found in the mountains of New Zealand. The name kia is also a Maori word relating to its loud recognizable call heard here. Our third day would be the most aggressive. From Pampalona Lodge, we would have to climb a steep and rocky 600 meters of elevation toward the head of the Clinton Valley and McKinnon Pass. The beach forest quickly gave way to a treeless alpine environment as we climbed above 950 meters, tree line in this part of New Zealand. Seeing the McKinnon Memorial in the distance was a welcome sight. At 1,154 meters, McKinnon Pass is the highest point on the Milford Track. It was named after Quinton McKinnon, a Scottish New Zealand explorer and tour guide who is credited to discovering this overland route between Lake Teanau and Milford Sound, and he would regularly guide travelers to Sutherland Falls. After enjoying lunch and the scenic view, we began the descent into Arthur Valley, passing several postcard-worthy vistas along the way. The final leg of this full day would bring us to the foot of Sutherland Falls. At 581 meters, this three-tiered cascade is believed to be the tallest in New Zealand and the fifth tallest in the world. With the most difficult day behind us, we got some much-needed rest at the Quinton Lodge. The longest day would start tomorrow morning. While most hikers prefer a dry day to a wet one, the final 21 kilometers on the Milford Track are best hiked in the rain. We were fortunate to have a rainy day, and hundreds of waterfalls flanked the trails as we made our way toward Milford Sound. Soaking wet with smiles on our faces, the renowned sign at Sandfly Point welcomed us to the end of the finest walk in the world. We then boarded our second water taxi and got our first look at Milford Sound. Milford Sound is a place of legend. 
Notable British author Richard Kipling visited the area in 1891 and famously declared the fjord the eighth wonder of the world. We were reunited with a fresh change of clothes at the last lodge. So cleaned up, we all posed for a group picture in front of the iconic Mitre Peak before gathering for our last dinner in Fjordland National Park. We spent our final evening looking at the dark night sky. New Zealand is exceptional for stargazing. The brightest of celestial objects in the night sky and how ambient light pollution affects them is measured on a 1 to 9 range called the Bortle Scale. Chicago is a class 9 site, the College of DuPage a class 7. Fjordland in most of New Zealand is class 1. Not only are the stars brighter, they are different. Orion appears upside down. Southern Cross, not visible in the continental United States, can be seen only if you pick it out in the galactic center of the Milky Way and the Magellanic Clouds, two dwarf galaxies visible only in the southern celestial hemisphere, can easily be seen with the naked eye.